Good morning, Diane from Milan, Italy, in my hotel, getting ready to go to catch a plane to Pristina, Kosovo. Thank you so much for asking me questions about my novel and how I wrote Just a Girl, a, a novel that I published last June. The, the topic today is point of view. You asked me what point of view I chose to write the novel. So I have three points I want to talk to you about, points about point of view. The first point is the definition of point of view. The second one is why I chose the point of view technique that I did. And the third one is the extra little technique that I added to help you understand. Well, first of all, let me give you the definition of point of view from Google. Now, if you don't know much about point of view, and a lot of people don't, just Google it, point of view in fiction, and you can learn a lot about point of view. Um, the point of view is the mode of narration an author employs to let the reader see here, see and hear what takes place in the novel. It's really who is telling the story. Well, this is a story about Paula. Paula is the protagonist. It's a coming of age story. So she's evolving from a young child, innocent, sort of innocent young child, and she evolves over time uh, to an adult and she um, learns and grows. So she comes of age. So first let me talk to you about, let me tell you what it isn't. My, the point of view that I chose, how the narrator tells you the story is not omniscient. Now omniscient is all seeing. So when the narrator tells you about Paula, he or she, doesn't matter, the narrator does not get into everyone's mind. So it's limited. When you read the story, the narrator allows you to know what Paula is thinking. Not what Marco is thinking, not what her father or her mother is thinking. Just you get into the mind of Paula. So I've chose third person limited. Third person, you will remember in your English class. First person is I, this is singular. Second person is you. Third person is he, she, or it. So it's third person. So that when the narrator tells you about Paula, the narrator refers to Paula as she. She went to the movies, she went to the store, she went to meet Marco. So it's third person, but it's limited. So she will say, uh, the narrator will say, uh, Paula went to the store uh, to buy some shoes. And that's not happening but for the sake of this discussion. Paula went to the store and bought some shoes and uh, she thought, I don't wanna spend too much money. She thought. Then she sees Marco in the shoe store and she says to herself, so the narrator says, Paula saw Marco and she thought, gosh, I love his shoes. But we don't know what Marco's thinking. We only know what Paula's thinking. Now we may know a little bit about Marco and the way in which the, the narrator describes Marco. For example, there is a uh, spot in the story where Paula and Marco are having breakfast and Paula draw, draws a part of her anatomy. You need to read that part. And Marco drops his fork and his plate suddenly. He just, Paula, Marco dropped the, his fork and the plate. Now, we don't know what he's thinking really, but there's a clue. He's kind of shocked. Again, third person limited. And I chose third person limited because I wanted you, I wanted the narrator to show you what Paula is thinking because as I mentioned at the beginning of this novel, it's a coming of age novel. To, so to advance the story, I need, the reader needs to understand what's happening in Paula's mind because that's the, her evolution. So that's why I chose third person. And it's not from Paula's perspective. It's not, Paula doesn't say I went into the store. It's Paula, she went into the store. So third person limited. It 
advances the story because you get into Paula's mind, but you don't get into Marco's mind, you don't get into Michael's mind, you don't get into Susan's mind, you don't get into anybody else's mind. And that creates a mystery, creates an intrigue, creates, uh, you know, the reader trying to figure things out. So I want to keep, keep you involved. Third person, limited. The other technique that I used, um, and a lot of authors use this, is the narrator may say, Paula went to the store and she saw Marco and he was wearing those new shoes. And then in italics in the next paragraph, there is this internal dialogue, Paula's internal dialogue. So it's in italics and so she may say, I love the way he dresses. I love those shoes. You can tell a lot about a man and the way in which he takes care of his shoes. So do you understand? Third person narrative, Paula, she went in the store and she thought, gee, I love those shoes. But then her, in, in her dialogue will say, wow, I really, I, Paula, I, internal dialogue that says, I really love a man who takes care of his shoes. All right, point of view is how the story is told by the narrator. You have lots of options in point of view and you wanna know more about that, I suggest you um, Google it and you can find it anywhere. I chose third person narrative because I wanted the reader to understand what Paul was thinking and I also wanted some mystery about what other people were thinking and the little hook there, the little technique at the end where you get Paula's internal dialogue makes it perfectly clear what she's thinking. And you can, you can, um, that's something she may not say out loud to people. Thank you so much. This is Diane signing off and I hope to see you the next time. And I hope you like this video. If you do like it, like it, please subscribe, please. If you haven't purchased the book, purchase the book if you're so inclined and please share. Thank you so much. Have a great day. I'm off to Pristina. Bye-bye.